Hi and welcome to my playhouse. Today I want to talk about how to get into um, messing around with server and storage and hardware and having a home lab and stuff like that. I get asked from time to time how do I get started with building my own home lab and uh, yeah I've been thinking about that quite a lot. I have tried and put in some advice, my advice, in videos and also when people have been asking in the comments I have also tried to reply on that um, but I thought that I would try and, and do it in a video as well. I started with server and storage interest I think back in 2004, 3, 4 ish. That was about the time where I got my first rack server. Uh, before that I had tower servers and before that I had servers that I built myself which was just PCs that I call a server. Um, a PC can be a server. You can run a very nice server on a very small regular PC. There is almost not a server operating system that this won't run. It will run server 2019, it will run VMware ESXi, it will run I guess it will run every distribution of Linux more or less. So if you just want to mess around with server operating systems, well you don't have to do much effort. You can install that on any PC more or less. A little bit less on laptops because they, they tend to be more specialized, have have weird network cards and graphics cards, so on and so forth. But if you want to get into to rack servers like I am, uh, my biggest recommendation is um, don't spend a lot of money on it. A lot of the fun in this is upgrading your system. So starting out with a smaller system and playing around with that and upgrading it is kind of the journey. And often the journey is more exciting than the actual server itself. So if, um, if I can say anything, when you're looking at eBay or bargain hardware for a new server, don't see your total amount of money and say, I want the best server for that amount. I would probably say half of what you have available, use that on your first server and then build on that. Um, you end out with a little bit older server, a little bit smaller server, but you have half the money to expand on that. And a big part of this is also the shopping around for the good deal on the new CPUs or that more RAM or, well, I'll just plug my own shop there. Uh, go visit my Playhouse shop. It's in the description. Okay, stop advertising. <laughs> so I thought that we should just have a look at my servers here and I can say a little bit um, if they're worth getting. Up here we have the awesome IBM X3650 Model 1. This is too old now. Um, unless you're given this, you should not get that anymore. It's, uh, it's, it's rather power consuming and it's, um, well, ESXi doesn't run very well on it. Any well, the older versions run just fine, but the newer versions has, uh, has given up on it. So it's, an, it's a very stable, very awesome, built like a tank server. But unless it's absolutely given to you for free or like 20 bucks, don't get it. Well, I still have three because I kind of, it's nostalgic, I like it. Then there is the Model 2. That's kind of the minimum server that I would recommend you to get right now. And I don't recommend you to pay very much for it. Um, if you want to translate this to, to Hewlett Packard or to Dell, this is like Hewlett Packard DL380 Generation 6. It's a very good server. This one uh, is able to use the Intel Xeon 5600 series. Uh, up to CPUs that use 95 watts. Over that uh, it does not work. But you can use CPUs, 6 core CPUs up to 95 watts and there is a few of those and I have done videos on that so if you search for X5679 you'll get some interesting results. Then I have a server that is way too expensive, another server that is way too expensive and then I have the, let's jump down here and take the Model 3. The Model 3 is the newer generation of the Model 2. 
So there's not much of a difference between the Model 3 and the Model 2. The Model 3 can do the entire range of CPUs in the Intel Xeon 5600 series, all the way up to the most power consuming 130 watt CPUs. Uh, and it has a couple of RAM blocks more and uh, yeah, that's about it. It's also a server that you get for very small money. This server is about the same as the uh, Hewlett Packard DL380 Generation 7 uh, in the Dell R710, I guess. Yeah, very good server to, to start with and you should be able to get this for under a hundred bucks without too much in it. Uh, the problem with servers is that the CPU and the RAM adds to the price and the hard drives. If there's a lot of good stuff in it, the server can be way more expensive. If it's a barebone server, uh, it can be very cheap. Then we go to the Model 4. We have one here. That's my 24-7 server at the moment. I'm running on a Model 4. But let's just point to this one instead. This is a very good server to start with. It can still be a bit too expensive to start with. You can be lucky to get this for a decent amount of money, but you can also find them way too expensive when you're looking at them. If you can get this for a price that is in your budget, it, it's a fine server. This one uses the next generation of CPUs, and those were the Intel Xeon E5 2600 series and that, uh, this one can use the version 1 and the version 2 of those CPUs. And this particular server has a little firmware bug, so if you get one used, make sure to firmware update it to the latest and the greatest right away. Bad things can happen if it's on really old firmware. Then we have a, an Asus server. This is a, this is a fun server. This one is meant for putting in graphics cards, so this one can fit four graphics cards, so it's kind of special in that regard. I would probably not recommend this as a starter, beginner, home lab server, it's, it's too specialized for that. Then we have this one, it's a 4U server with four CPUs in it. It uses a heck lot of power and as a beginner server I wouldn't recommend this either. It's just too big, too noisy. Well, right now it's off, so it's not saying anything. But you would probably get a bad experience. Plus, it's it's picky. This is like high enterprise equipment. It gets a bit complicated to get this up and running uh, for a beginner. So it's a good server, but I wouldn't recommend it for your first server. The two that was too expensive, the Model 5 here. Well, in a few years, those are going to be available for for cheap and the, the model 4 here is the same generation as the Hewlett Packard DL 380 generation 8 and this one is the same as the generation 9 and this one up here is the same as the generation 10 of uh, Hewlett Packard and for Dell this is the, the 720s 730, 740 up here. Often you can find Hewlett Packard and Dell servers way cheaper than, than this uh, IBM slash Lenovo servers. I'm not gonna make the video about that, but often these servers are more expensive than Dell and Hewlett Packard. I have one of these Hewlett Packard servers here. This is a DL380 generation six, which is about the same as the IBM X3650 model two. Uh, so that's the same generation of CPUs and chipset and all of that. Um, actually uh, a good server. It, it's also built really steady. Um, then there is one U servers. I do not recommend these as the first server. Um, expansion possibilities are kind of limited. Plus the fans in these servers are kind of small. So to make a small fan cool a server, let's say you get a good CPU in there, it has to run really fast to cool that CPU. And so it becomes very noisy. And the same thing for the one down here. This one is actually a Model 4 of the IBM slash Lenovo X3550, which is a pretty decent server. So, um, but I would not recommend a 1U server as the first server 
I would go for a 2U server. Over here on the shelf, I have some other models. Uh, there's a Model 3, a Model 4, Model 2, Model 3, Model 2, Model 3, Model 1 of the IBM X30 X50. <laughs> what to go for with your hard drives? There are kind of two options uh, in older equipment like that. There is three and a half inch hard drives and there is two point, two point, oh, there isn't any discs in any of these. Uh, there is only fillers. Um, if you can get a server with three and a half inch hard drives, it's, um, it's very nice to have that extra space. Uh, these are three terabyte drives and this server can easily take 10, 18 terabyte drives whereas if you choose a server with two and a half inch slots well the maximum uh, storage in a spinning disk here is 2.4 terabytes anything bigger than that and you get these shindle magnetic drives which in many cases are not what you want so if you want a big amount of storage look for um, for three and a half inch hard drive base if you are okay with smaller and more drives then you want a two and a half drive base so yeah um, these are more rare because at some point the server manufacturers decided that we all wanted two and a half inch base and then if we needed more storage we should connect an extra box to our server so these are two boxes full of hard drives i would not start by getting that this is something that i would recommend to play with along the way when you have uh, fully upgraded your server and is ready to move on and try something new it's a very nice system no no doubt about it there's a lot of drives in here three terabyte drive and uh, there's even some 10 terabytes i think this is a 10 terabyte yeah you can connect your server to an external dash like this and then get more storage that way in the middle of my rack here i have a blade sensor so each of these are a blade and they are a server i would not recommend you to start with anything like this sometimes you'll get this offered for free at that point you should take it but it's not a great place to start it's very complicated to get this set up dealing with the management adapter and IP configurations and stuff uh, way more complicated than on a regular server and this is very noisy it's not built for anything else than a data center and it uses 800 watts more or less doing absolutely nothing it's a power hungry bugger <laughs> but along the way I would definitely encourage people to try something like this it's a great toy kind of a weekend warrior something that you turn on Friday evening and play around with all weekend and you definitely turn it off when you're not using it so yeah so when you along the way have gotten yourself a couple of servers you will be looking for rack and in the rack department they don't have to be expensive you can get used to racks they are thrown out all the time from companies that exchange their racks or get a rack with some equipment in and they move the equipment and put them in their own racks and then they have this rack transport rack or whatever and they just want to get rid of that so often you can find that for really cheap and there is different heights you can get half racks third racks yeah all the way up to 52 u's i think is the highest rack that i've heard about the old standard is 42 u's a u is one space for a server where i am recommending the two u servers and not recommending the one new servers um, until you have somewhere like this where you can't hear it if you have a server that is living under your bed don't go with a one new server and more or less don't put a server under your bed <laughs> but to be a little bit future proof if you have the room for it you would like a rack that is uh, deeper um, the newer equipment that is being built now it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper I think I have no idea how deep mine is let's get back to that my racks are 80 centimeters and that is not a lot these days these are very old racks these are from Compaq servers back when um, Compaq was the one making the DL380 series so I think it, when these racks was new that was on generation 1 and generation 2 
and that was plenty for that equipment. Down at the bottom here, I have a newer Hewlett Packard storage box, and it goes like this much, uh, and it goes about this much out behind the rack, which is uh, kind of irritating when I'm working back there. But it has room for 70 drives, so I'm cutting a little bit of slack because of that. But at work, we have just built two new data centers, and in those data centers, we're actually using racks that are 120 centimeters deep and that is going to be needed this is the storage box this is the d6000 uh, from hewlett packard and this has just went out of production well not this one they made a later one that was called d6020 and that one has just gone out of production and it has been replaced by a d8000 and the d8000 is 114 centimeters long I wouldn't be able to fit it in my rack because this one is already sticking out a nice amount in the back and the newer one is like 20 centimeters longer so getting a rack that is a little bit deeper is more future proof I'm running into issues myself here if I wanted to test equipment like that it would be with great difficulties here because my rack is so old it's also a nice old other stuff that you might want to look into when you're starting up and want to play with enterprise equipment is the the networking you want to switch most likely you want to switch and you want a fast switch you want 10 gigabit for sure um, I would actually recommend you to start with a 1 gigabit switch because you can always upgrade to a 10 gigabit switch and they are only getting cheaper but when you look at enterprise switches they can be very power consuming so that's a very big thing to look at. You want a switch that doesn't use 280 watts just being a switch doing nothing. If you can move the same amount of data forth and back for 100 watts or 50 watts, definitely go that route. Some of them are just too wasteful. Power consumption is a big deal. I'm using Ubiquiti switches myself. Uh, it's, it's very low enterprise, barely enterprise switches, but they are very power efficient and I was able to get a 10 gigabit switch for about $600 um, it's actually still $600 here three years later no idea why that hasn't come down other stuff that you might want you might want a UPS I just had this not long ago that would actually be a very good starter UPS it's too small for what I wanted it for but if you're just starting up with servers this one, I did a video on it not long ago. And this one is a uh, power walker. I don't know, it's not available worldwide, but in Europe you can get it and it's very affordable. Then you might want to look into getting a, a console. And don't get this as the first thing. Uh, just use an old screen keyboard and a mouse. This can wait and they have become very cheap. These used to be at least a thousand dollars. Now you can get them for a hundred, two hundred dollars without, without having to be very lucky. It's quite difficult to make money on having a lot of servers. You might have a good business plan or a niche that will make it for you. But if you're just planning to host servers for your friends to play on, you will very quickly find out that they don't want to pay Diggly Squat for their gaming servers and they expect it for free. It's really uphill making money off your home data center. If you have a home data center and you're making a good amount of money, do leave it down below because I'm very interested in what other people are doing and how they are cashing out on this. <laughs> but talking about cash, it's time for me to advertise my Patreon. In the links in the description is, uh, is a link to my Patreon where I think you should go and check me out. There are some free posts down there. I do from time to time just make an open post and it's to lure you in. I'm not hiding anything. I'm luring you in down there because I want as many patrons as possible. That's also why it's so cheap. There is a $1 and a $3 tier down there. It's not about the money. It's about the engagement and um, I rather have many friends than rich friends. Well, nothing wrong with rich friends actually. But yeah. <laughs> Please remember to like this video. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.